tomorrow we have got USA versus Jamaica in World Cup qualifying in the October international break. We are playing in Austin, Texas tomorrow and I'm very excited. Very, very excited. Some some key players missing in this in this international break for us. Uh, Christian Pulisic, Gio Reyna, among the two the two biggest stars we have will not be in attendance. Will not be will not be there. And I'm very interested to see the lineup Greg Berhalter puts out there. I'm I'm expecting to see Brendan Aronson up top. He has been incredible for. Rebel Salzburg in the Austrian Bundesliga and in the Champions League. He has been knocking in goals left and right, making great attacking runs, and he has been playing in some very big games. So we know he can do it on the big stage. So hopefully he can he can knock in a couple for us tomorrow in, in this World Cup qualifying match. But the first match against Jamaica is a huge one to set the tempo. As these games are so so close in proximity to each other, only days days apart, momentum is very key. Momentum is essential in making sure we get good results out of these games. And they're against very solid teams. Uh, following this Jamaica game, we have Panama and Costa Rica, two established CONCACAF teams after an already established Jamaican, Jamaican team. In World Cup qualifying in September, Greg Berhalter used 21 of the 26 players on the available roster across the three games and if this Jamaica game goes very well this could put him in a very difficult situation and create a lot of tough decisions he's going to have to make because when things go well you do not you don't want to change anything up but you you do need to give these players some rest and you do need to sort of load management across across all the players as they're all playing so many games in Europe for a lot of them and a lot of them in the MLS but it's it's tough when you if hopefully if we win tomorrow and it is a convincing win with a good performance it's going to be interesting how he shuffles the lineup it's already a lineup tomorrow that no one really knows what it's going to look like with a lot of key players missing um usually we have a pretty good sense of Pulsic on the left, Sargent up top, and Gio out right. Uh, but with a lot of with those guys missing, it's you're going to have a lot of players that aren't perfectly made for the roles they're going to play, but are very technically technically good and talented in other aspects of their game that are going to thrive either out wide or running through the middle. Greg Berhalter, Greg Berhalter has mentioned that he wants to play vertically, and for him, this is. Absurd. This is like this is like Jose Mourinho saying he's he's gonna play three at the back and, and attacking. It, it goes against what what he does. Uh, he he's never really puts lineups out there that are very vertical, very in your face. But with a lot of these star players missing and players that are used to playing with clubs like Chelsea and Dortmund and this this high level of football, I think there's gonna be a different style of play. I think there's gonna be this. This passion, a, a fight from the U.S. It, it it may not be pretty, but there's gonna be there's gonna be a fight, and in Concacaf, that's that's sometimes what you have to do to grind out these results against um, countries like Jamaica, like the Panamas and Costa Ricas. But it, it's gonna be very tough. But U.S. have excelled playing home in Concacaf as opposed to on the road. Um, they have struggled in recent history on the road, as we all know. So I'm glad the first game is in is in the States, where we can sort of get a grip on things, hopefully get a grip on things, and set the tone for this next week. A week of stress for me, a week of hope, and a week that could either go very good or very bad. If we walk out of this World Cup qualifying stage or whatever one whatever you want to call it without losing and coming away with I would say two wins out of the three and maybe one draw that's very good against the against these opponents that's very good and especially with the star power we're missing it, it gives hope to this team and their only goal right now is to qualify for the world cup after the disaster of 2018 there's nothing on these players' minds except qualify. It's qualify or or else, pretty much. 
There, there's no next steps if you do not qualify. It is here in the now is the, the priority for this team. And I think that's what Greg Berhalter has to be pushing to the lads, the young lads in the dressing room, the American lads that have, there haven't been an American team in the World, in the World Cup since 2014, since the Brazil World Cup, since James Rodriguez pulled that madness of a volley. Think back to how long ago that volley was. That was the last time the U.S. were in the World Cup. Sad. I, I miss U.S. men's national team World Cup games. I, I miss the, the the national unity around soccer and, and these these young kids turning these European soccer stars, these, these American stars playing in Europe into household names, making U.S. men's national team mainstream again. That, that's where I think we've fallen off as we're not mainstream anymore. After the after 2018, it, it took us off the the mainstream media, the mainstream market of of the general American public. But it, it all starts now. This is the building blocks for success. These games, when you don't have your strongest roster, when you have very a very a lot of games in a very short amount of time. This is the building blocks for success. The tough, the grind out games that will put you in a good position for the future. That's all we have to be thinking right now as this is CONCACAF World Cup qualifying. People like to disrespect CONCACAF, but if you watch CONCACAF, if you watch the US men's national team play a lot of these games, you know CONCACAF is no joke. People in Europe, they want to diss CONCACAF. They want to say it's a joke. It's a farmer's league. They love calling anything that is not European football farmer's league. And I can assure you it's not that. It is hostile. It, it may not be as flashy and as pretty as, as the Spaniards connecting 100 different passes before they score. It is definitely not that. But it is still football and it is still great football at that. I am absolutely buzzing for this game tomorrow and the games coming up. Going into my prediction... I really hope we can keep a clean sheet tomorrow. I hope we can. But the problem hasn't been defensively, defensively for us. It's been attacking. We haven't been able to score very many goals, especially with the star power we have. We should be scoring more goals. And I think that comes down to tactics. And hopefully this, this new, this vertical style of, of Greg Berhalter, U.S. men's national team football, can, can help get some, get some goals on the, on the board, you know? We, we, we have to get goals. Number one priority, get goals. And you gotta excite the fans, excite the team, build build pride around this team. But uh, I think it I think it will finish one nil. US. I hope it would be I hope we score more than one, but I think it will finish one nil. But that's all that matters. Three points. Hope we can come come away with the three points. I'll see you guys later.